Hi everybody, this is Sandeep for AudioMIDI.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to incorporate Ableton Live into your Tractor Control S4 setup. Uh, the reason why you might want to do this is let's say you're a current Ableton user, you use Ableton at your gigs and you're looking to move into Tractor but you still have a lot of Ableton stuff going on or you, know, you want to incorporate that into your set. Uh, another good reason would be let's say you're collaborating with another performer. If you, Let's say you're running the S4 and you've got somebody else running Ableton so this would be how to do that. The other one that would be a really good benefit is uh, being able to incorporate VST and audio units, synths and drum machines into tractors so if you want to you know have like battery running in the background or something like that you can you can do that it really opens up some options deep for your DJ set. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to set it up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to have MIDI sent out of tractor into Ableton and then have the audio from Ableton come back into Tractor. A lot of the old school hardware guys are pretty familiar with these types of processes, but there's a few things to uh, know with regards to software and doing it all internally. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing that's important to know is I'm going to be doing this within the same computer by Ableton and Tractor running side by side. So there's my Ableton and here's my uh, Tractor. So they're running on the same computer, which is a little convenient if you're trying to you know, move over from from Ableton. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up Tractor to send the MIDI data out. And we're going to do this by going into Preferences. If you give me a second, I got a little beach ball going. Um, and what what we're going to do is we're going to create a new MIDI device in Tractor, and we're going to have that MIDI device send out a MIDI clock to Ableton. So what we're going to do is right here under the controller manager in the setup, we're going to go to add, and we're going to add a generic MIDI device. Uh, for the input port, we're not going to really need that. For the output port, what we're going to do is we're going to send virtual, a tractor virtual output as the output port. So this is going to send the tractor time clock over to Ableton. Um, and that's pretty much that here. Uh, we'll go to Ableton. Here's how we set up Ableton to receive the MIDI. You go into Preferences, and we go under MIDI and Sync. And right here, this is all the MIDI ports that are available, based on whatever drivers or you know or devices are connected into your computer at the time. So here we have under Input we have Tractor Virtual Output, and I've enabled Track, Sync, and Remote. You don't really don't need to do that. You can do Sync, and that'll be just fine. But I just like to keep it on uh, for the MIDI clock sync delay right here. Uh, you can mess with it if you'd like. I don't really think you need to just because the way the S4 works is more of a DJ setup where you can pitch bend in real time and get things in time with each other on the fly. So it's not as vital as say, let's say, you know, if you're doing a traditional hardware MIDI setup where everything needs to be clocked and everything. So you're not, you're not bound by that. And, it's, and it's some, it makes it a little easier because you don't have to worry about latency and things like that. If you, if you don't have that accessible to you, you can, you can work things around. Uh, for sync type, right here, we're going to do MIDI clock. And then the MTC stuff, we just leave it blank because we're not really using that. Uh, so that's set up to receive the MIDI. And in a Ableton, what you're going to do is you're going to click that top left-hand corner. There's an external sync button. So if you see, if I adjust the tempo right here, let's say I make it 107, tractor over here is saying 121.48. When I hit external, you'll see it jump in a second to 121. It's 0.46. It's a couple bits off, but nothing to really make a difference and, and affect a set. So that's not a problem. Uh, and then the next step would be sending audio from Ableton into tractor. The way we do this is just by using a, uh, I'm using an external sound card, which I found the easiest way. There's no really internal way to do it when you're using the S4 just because you want to have a, a, a physically plugged in on the back of the unit. So I have a Native Instruments Audio 2 DJ interface set up. So I have the audio coming out of here. Uh, like I said, the latency I'm not too worried about. So, you know, it's nice to have it as tight as possible. But if it's not accessible, if it's, it's tough to do, then that's, that's fine. So I have it coming out of the Audio 2 DJ. And then if you see on the back of my... S4 unit right here. I have the RCA plugs connected into the back of the unit. So that's all good to go. Um, the next thing I'm going to be showing you is uh, these MIDI parts that I have in Ableton. Uh, what I've got right here is I have a test MIDI clip. It's just four notes. 
of ascending notes, sorry, four notes of ascending, yeah, notes, uh, which make up one bar, so it sounds like this, it just goes, just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, real simple, and the same thing on this synth. Here I have a drum machine. And like I was saying earlier about uh, not having to worry about having everything in sync because you can you can push things in time and pitch bend the tractor stuff to get it in time. So you'll see if I I'll start the track and it might not start off perfectly, but there's something I can adjust. Pitch in a little bit, and there you go. We're in time. So now that we've tested the MIDI parts, I'm going to play the uh, the actual parts that I meant to have. So here we're going to have one synth line. Pretty simple. And then we're going to have this one, which I purposely had being an arpeggiated melody, just so you can see how it syncs up. You'll notice when I tempo change, this might fall off. It's not that it's falling off, it's because this is an arpeggiated sound. So it needs to get the note information before hopping back in time. So those are our Ableton parts. Uh, in uh, Tractor, I'm gonna be playing this track, which, uh, it's one of the demo songs that comes with the S4, which is really nice. There's a lot of, there's nice toolkits of sound effects, loops, and whatnot. So what I'm using, it's, uh, it's just called Techno 1. And uh, the other one is called Techno 2 over here. So it's pretty simple. So if this track is playing, it should be in time. So you see they're in time. Do some improv here. All right, next, what I'm going to be showing you is uh, changing the pitch. So you see that even when I change the pitch, it still stays in time. So you'll see right here, I'm going to slow this track down. And I found if you move a little slower, it's a little better, but uh, it, it responds to fast changes as well. Bring that tempo back up. So you see, like I said, it's it's pretty responsive. If I go all the way back down to slow, really fast, it hops back in time pretty fast. There we go, now we're back in time. Uh, next I'll show you mixing in another track. So here's our next track that we have queued up. So now we have a track playing on deck B, a new track coming in on deck A, and then our Ableton on deck C. So this is like a, it's like a normal DJ so would go. I go one track to the next. The only thing is we've got the Ableton stuff going on here on top of that. So pretty much wraps that up. If you have any questions, feel free to call us or email us at audiomidi.com. And of course, this is available on the website, audiomidi.com. Thanks a lot.